Hello everybody and welcome back. I am Mr. JP and the game is out of awe. So, after my last gameplay episode where I was using the loader, I discovered that three sorting drums seems to be the optimum for producing the stuff and leaving me with very little production time left over afterwards. Come on. Uh, so you don't have to wait ages until you can quit and restart and carry on digging. Also doing a little bit of an experiment to see if I can up the uh, profit ratio here. Got the jaw crushes going in the line. Just to see whether rich stuff still comes out after it's been jaw crushed really. Uh, so we're pouring out into a pile which uh, started the Pillar of Doom but I put in a little distributor. That's all you need is a little angle block like that or a couple facing away from the uh, conveyor and it will just start to scatter it which uh, saves you a few problems. So yeah. Uh, I've seen a few people commenting, oh, stuff doesn't fall off the bulldozer blade. Well, it does, you just have to raise it. Uh, when using the bulldozer, always make sure you raise your hook to, to start with, because uh, that saves it digging in when you hit inclines, or when backing up towards things. Just setting my GPS up so I don't dig too deep here. There we go. To set that up, you just uh, bring your mouse over to here and click on the zero. And that'll zero it to wherever the blade is set with most machines. Uh, I think it's the uh, 201 or 202 loader. Uh, it's the one with the tow hitch. I think it's the 202 or 302. 302. Uh, that one is a little bit bugged in the fact that uh, the GPS appears to be locked to the chassis rather than the blade. So uh, it's something to be borne in mind, but it is quite a good construction level. So what I've been doing here. Uh, I've got my blade set to the sort of standard setting that it will come with when you start up a game. I'm going to raise it to full height. I'm just going to go into the wall here, like so. Then lower it as I'm backing out. Until I lift those sort of front wheels up. And as you turn, you can see I've got slow turning speed. I'm just lifting the blade slightly. And that will pick up. You don't want to lift the blade too far because you lose all your stuff off the end. Um, and now I can just push it around like this, you see. No worries. And so it will fall off when I lift the blade. If I were to lift the blade when running along, I'd build a ramp, um, which is a handy trait. So uh, whilst it may not be that realistic, this is the only way that I think the dozer blade can be programmed and still be useful. Uh, it does have some interesting traits that you will discover. One of them being the ability to apparently generate dirt, but I don't think it is generating it. I think it's just spreading it out and generating more voxels. The actual volume of the dirt and its contents appears to stay the same. But uh, So yeah, just do the same thing again. Lower the blades to come out. Lift those front wheels, as it were. And the closer you get to the point of losing the load, the faster your dozer will move, by the way. So you feel like you're crawling along, try raising the blade, doesn't matter if you start spilling it, it's fairly easy to clear up if you're on a concrete surface like this. If you're on dirt it's a bit harder but a uh, quick trip out with the roller is uh, sometimes advisable. So yeah, I, I, I'm just sat here bulldozing like this, sorry about that if the mic went thump. Having a bit of a scratch and just caught my uh, headset there. And uh, yeah, I just go back and forth like this. For, for a little while. And as you can see, I'm doing about the longest route possible at the moment. So this is the slowest cycle time I can achieve. And I'm doing it that way for a reason. It's because I wanted to see whether I could keep up with these. And I can, at this distance. So you don't necessarily need your machines all hugger mugger on top of you. Because if you do, and you're getting those fast cycle times, you'll hit the FPS limit sooner. And then you'll have to sit and wait for these to catch up with you. So sometimes little bit of running backwards and forwards, not a bad thing. <coughs> Likewise, if you're operating at longer distance and you're doing a lot of running backwards and forwards, it is less efficient in time mining compared to the volume that you're getting in, but you might only need two sorting drums in that situation because they'll keep up with you. Uh, not sure about what happens when you use the dumper truck, uh, but I figured that with uh, the FPS issue being apparently related to when the balls are formed, um, 
spraying them out with the dumper truck can be a little uh, risky on game crashes so you want to save before each run um, or at least that's the method I've been using so I just look over there and I can see which conveyor is still loading and load the next one and I just keep going along here in order like that and that keeps them all fairly even stops any of them overloading and when we get to the FPS crash you'll, you'll, uh, well hopefully not the crash but when we get to the FPS wall uh, you'll see that I don't have to wait long for a restart now we can do it in the film time of a video um, so yeah this is this is the game for me at the moment I'm just expanding this deck slowly but surely uh, once this deck's fully expanded to the point that I want it for the, the experiments that I want to do uh, I will be going back up to the top deck and continuing to mine um, there's not going to be a lot to show in the weekly walkabout this week really um, You've pretty much seen everything I'm doing in the gameplay videos, but we'll do it anyway. Uh, so I'll probably outline future plans, that kind of thing. Maybe uh, do a bit of travelling in a vehicle, and uh, maybe see whether there's somewhere where I can uh, detonate a nuke. So the valley in front of me looks kind of tempting. Because <laughs> uh, whilst, whilst I, I believe the nuke should have been called Resonant Charge, because they're, uh, when used correctly, more probably more powerful. Um, did a little bit of research about those, found out some stuff that I thought was a conspiracy theory that turned out that it might be true. I hate it when that happens because it scares the hell out of me. Um, it's happened a few times, you know, um, big conspiracy stuff like 9-11 to one side. Uh, some of the smaller stuff that you hear about in fictional books that you then look up and find out was true is sometimes a little bit scarier. Um, likewise, if, if, you, if you're the nervous type, don't go looking around the uh, CIA's um, sort of uh, public release area. It's called The Vault. It's very interesting. Um, had a few problems accessing it from the UK, but we're over that now. Uh, my gosh. Oh. <laughs> so that was true then. Uh, it's sort of the reaction to a lot of the stuff in, in, in The Vault. Uh, it's very very fascinating reading, uh, but as I said, if you're of the nervous disposition, don't go there. Um, but yeah, so as you can see by my rambling, I get a little bit bored sometimes when I'm digging. My mind sort of roams. I do a lot of bit, of, a lot of reflection and thinking whilst playing out of awe. Uh, it's very good for reconciling uh, the traumatic stuff and the irreconcilable things in life. I find I find it very soothing. Um, as I say, if they can get rid of this FPS issue, I will be very soothed because there will no longer be anything that grinds my gears, which will be cool. Because it's a really good game. I think the developers done a really good job with this one. Bergsbrook had its rough sides, but this 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 has been polished. But I understand why Bergsbrook had its rough sides. It's because it was unfinished, waiting for the multiplayer side of things. But when you're talking about multiplayer games with massive voxel edits you can run into issues um, we've noticed it in other games like seven days to die when you edit an awful lot of voxels in a multiplayer environment it sometimes doesn't update for other players and there's a lot of data being exchanged and the whole game can lag uh, likewise uh, another game I play railroads online that runs on the same engine as this the unreal 4 engine it has similar crashes and similar frame rate problems um, in fact, I think crash windows the same, other than you get to send a, a crash report to the Unreal 4 people. I must have sent hundreds, and I don't think they have any effect. Um, but th the fact that you see these crashes indicates it's a problem in the engine, or how the engine manages data. Um, but yeah, it, it, Railroads Online isn't even a voxel-related game. Um, the system of rails in it uses a system called splines and every section you build is a spline these are registered in a table in the game and this table is checked for wheel to spline contact every game tick uh, and then physics calculations are done etc etc so th there is a massive amount of calculations going on there when you relate that to out of ore and the unreal 4 engine what we have here is a lot of parallel processing calculations every rock that drops out is a set of physics calculations it hits and it decides which way it bounces uh, every time I edit terrain I would assume that there's a temporary terrain edit file and that's what's getting too big for the game engine 
because it doesn't matter whether I'm digging like this and then dropping it onto the ground or whether I'm loading hoppers or <laughs> like loading into conveyors there you will eventually hit this frames crash uh, and we're, we're coming up to it now I'm seeing my frames per second oscillate up to 51 which indicates that it's starting to go hmm I'm needing to work I can hear my fans kicking in as well in my uh, PC which is water cooled so when the fans come on that's serious and yeah there we go see <coughs> uh, it wasn't a bad one but I, that I think was flicking down to 39 you can s I can see that the uh, the response of the game is getting a little bit jerky um, so yeah there's definitely still something going on it needs fixing but I'm still loving the game you know <laughs> it's a development game they have foibles and you get around them um, like certain ways of building certain ways of doing business like working from a flat platform of these um, floor plates is in my opinion key to an easy life look what I'm doing here like you can do this one handed um, you can leave the blade down in a fixed position and just go backwards and forwards backwards and forwards it's no worries uh, the only thing that will do is destroy anything on the floor uh, can dig holes if you're not on plates but yeah you, you can literally just run backwards and forwards backwards and forwards so yeah that, that dropped down to 34 and this will drop about 10 fps every time I do a dump now until we're down in single figures and then it crashes um, likewise with the loader similar thing happens but the fps drop is only about four because the steps are smaller because it's a smaller bucket and it generates less of these balls seems to be related to how many balls are generated at a time because you can do about three dumper loads and get to this fps wall uh, which isn't a lot of material it, it's about 15 buckets from the loader loading the loader into the hoppers i can get to about 60 before i hit the fps wall so yeah Sorry if I seem a bit preoccupied by this FPS thing, but software that doesn't provide smooth and consistent performance really grinds my gears. This might be the motivation that I get to learn how to model program, or at least read up about the Unreal 4 engine and find out why it's such a piece of crud. Crud? No, crud's mountain biking. Cludge. Cludge is an electronics term. Yeah, we'll go with cludge. The Unreal 4 engine, whilst very nice, is a piece of cludge. Um, <laughs> I, I actually feel a little sorry for Christian if it is the Unreal 4 engine he's having to fight with because the creators don't appear to listen to their fault reports um, I understand it though they're working with the Unreal 5 engine but currently any game using the Unreal 5 engine is calling it something different <laughs> which makes me wonder about its um, parentage shall we say so yeah um, this is the game at the moment like I don't really know what to say I am loving out of all by the way everybody oh hello 12 frames per second 19 yeah we're getting to the restart point really um, so I'll back this dozer up over here and uh, yeah I'm not seeing any rich stuff in this stuff that I'm running but it is mainly dirt so that's to be expected. I'd expect to get more from this pile over here. And that pile was just built by bulldozing out that lump there. So there's a lot of material. You can get a lot of material out. I'm thinking about bulldozing some lithium seams up the top and spreading them out and seeing what happens. Because uh, I've noticed some traits from reversing with the bulldozer blade and dumping that... Uh, well, let's just say I'd mined all that lithium out. I went in with a dozer and now I've got big piles of it again. And I made half a million when I was dozing like this into there. So could be interesting when we get to that point so let's have a little look see over here and see what's going on so that machine's still loading that machine's just finished that machine's got 100% left so as you can see we're not gonna have to wait long just shut down these may as well save some money there we go so that's still loading at the moment it's just finishing come on conveyor there we go so yeah, got about 300% in there. It's probably run another few hundred percent as well as it was turning. So uh, since that one's just run 100% already in that time. It doesn't take long when they've got small amounts in, but it seems like the more you load them, the slower they run. But there is not a lot coming out through these because of the stuff I'm running at the moment. Not a lot. 
not at all. Hmm. As you can see, it runs about 7% a second. Just as a, a rough guess. Meaning that if you divide whatever number you see there by seven, you'll know roughly how long your drums can run, which means you know how long you've got to make some toast and some tea. Uh, if you've loaded it up like I did to 30,000 the other day, which was a, a minor miracle without crashing the game, uh, the answer is around about long enough to put cheese on your toast. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's all run through, that's all run through, lovely jubbly. It's a bit of a lag when saving, but I think that's because there's a lot of modifications in my world, a lot of peaks and troughs in the map. I need to go around with the roller and smooth everything out. Seems to help with graphics generation as well. So uh, it's just as easy to quit as to have two saves and save twice. Um, it's quicker. Uh, that's, that's the conclusion. And then we'll load back up, reset all those files and folders, and we can dig again. So essentially, if you put a loop into the save game option that resets and reloads the game automatically, that would clean all those file folders and every time you saved, you get rid of the FPS drop. Uh, there's an idea. Someone point that out to Christian, please. Uh, or remind me to. Because <laughs> I'm terribly forgetful about stuff and I'm also a little bit shy of approaching the developer. Uh, perhaps I shouldn't be. Um, but I am only a really small fish <laughs> in a big YouTube pond, and I know it. Um, you have to watch out when you start making YouTube videos. There's like a rush at the start of it and, and all kinds of things. Um, luckily, I, I have seen some videos about this subject from other YouTubers who, who I, um, I like and respect. And their advice has been very useful in, in preventing any of that. Because, um, yeah, it could easily happen, and it could happen to anyone. Um, just like, you know, uh, bad events in life, that kind of thing. You don't know when they're going to hit, and the whole YouTube ego thing can be very powerful. A um, friend make, uh, of mine who comes over for coffee, he makes YouTube videos as well, and we were talking about it, and we're just like, yeah, it, it exists. Like, we've seen videos about it. But it's only when you start making YouTube videos and you feel the tickle at the edge of it, you're like, oh, oh, uh, what, why, what, what is that <laughs> sort of feeling? It's, it's quite weird. So yeah, we're back to running these the machines again, and uh, I think I'm just going to load all three with a single dozer blade before I fire it up, and we'll see how much we actually get for a dozer blade full. Just to answer that question as a, as a factual thing, so I've been doing little measurements and stuff in my head on it. Um, Find out. Do, 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 do. Then lower the blade. Make sure oh, didn't lower it far enough. That's what happens, it just spreads out in front of you. Guaranteed full blade full, which is kind of handy. Turn it down here. May as well tidy up the edges and going past, since that pile of uh, rich stuff over there is going to spread out on me at some point. And as you saw, that back one has actually finished loading. So at this distance, you could probably get away with two and just have a bit of run over at the end, but I prefer. Uh, as I say, loading three and not having the sort of delay between uh, finishing digging and restarting. Um, don't ask me, maybe it's my background in manufacturing, but I hate idle machinery, um, which makes me a nightmare for uh, certain games like uh, I build things that break them all the time, uh, Minecraft being one of them. There's only so many ticks per second in that game, and I filled all of them, and uh, yeah, it wasn't good. 
<laughs> oh, wrong one. Hit for the right hopper. That's the nice thing about this setup as well, is you, you, you can adjust fairly easily where you're going in. <coughs> Alright, let's have a look see. See what we've got. Eight hundred and seventy-three. So my my guess of nine hundred for a really full one. Eight hundred and fifty-three. Yeah, it's not a bad guess. So a really full blade's worth will probably get you that. Oh, we've got crushers to turn on now, JP. Get it right. That's good. They've already got stuff falling into them, so. Yeah, this could be going straight into the Grizzly and out, but I wanted to see what was coming out. So, uh, just as a general thing, you know, if you see glittery bits, you know it's rich stuff. <laughs> Same as anything in life, right? Um, so, yeah, we're going to go back and forth into this hill again. Without piling up too much stuff, hopefully. And you'll see where I reversed out there with the blade down, it sort of did some minor smoothing. Um, come on, turn. There we go. That's got it. As I said, you get faster the closer you get to the blade release point of the dirt. The reason I was crawling along at the start, I was way, way too low with the blade. I needed to come up quite a lot. Uh, a blade position indicator would be nice. Uh, I think it's coming. Uh, I have every confidence. <coughs> I want this FPS issue sorted first, but then, yeah, I want to see some cool stuff. Like, you know, I'm, once the FPS issue is sorted, it opens the doors for some bigger machinery and more complicated. Um, processors for the uh, or uh, some kind of uh, screening plant that allows you to separate it into types would be cool um, so that way we could use it for different things in the map because money becomes sort of no issue as you can see the little bit of ripping out of lithium I've done has earned me about 13, 14 mil because um, I've bought a load of equipment as well, like the jaw crushers. So realistically, once you really get into a big lithium seam or a big coal seam, or a big platinum seam, don't forget the platinum, that stuff does earn well. Uh, you, you really aren't going to have to worry after a little bit of hard work. Um, Bring this in again. Uh, the reason sometimes little balls appear as I'm pushing it along is because I've got gaps under the floor and they're falling into that. Uh, eventually it builds them all up or you can just remove the tiles, bulldoze them up over the top, smooth it off and then put the tiles back. And that gives you a smooth floor. Uh, nice and easy. So when, it, when and if I remove all the tiles from here uh, you'd see that it was a smooth floor covered with uh, patches of where I stockpiled rich stuff, really. Um, might be more efficient to clean off that top area with a loader, dump it in a pile and then put it down here, but ah, this is working. <laughs> see if I can take that end off. Since I did lose a little bit out of the bucket, am I going to the right one? Yeah. So frame rate dropped then to 39 um, briefly. Uh, as I say, you don't get that much in per session, and then it's a quick quit out and restart and back in. But slowly but surely, you do start to make a bit of a dent, as you can see. Um, 
clear up the mess I just made. So at least it's smooth and in the hill. And that way when I back out, I won't lose too much of the blade. He says. That's a massive blade fall because it's the texture sticking through the back of the blade that indicates fall. And it happens with the loader as well and sometimes it's a massive overfill. Um, so that will take a lot longer to fall off the blade. Yeah, down to 20s in the FPS there. So as you can see it's knocking about 10 FPS off every time I do a push. Um, which isn't the best of situations <laughs> in, in, in my personal opinion. So yeah, this, this hole's starting to extend a little so just uh, jump out of that. Ooh, I need more more floor panels, that's for sure. Need to go and buy some. That will do for the moment. Keeps things smooth. Stops bits falling off the blade randomly. Lower the blade, like that. <laughs> Perfect example of it occurring. It's because I've gone too steep on that slope as well. But that'll smooth itself out as I go in and out of the uh, face. And you just run up it with the blade a little bit lower. You can smooth lovely little slopes in with the bulldozer. It's a really great construction tool. This is the Legal model of Bulldozer, by the way, for, for those that aren't familiar with the game. It's not a paint job, this is the original paint job. It's had a bit of work now, so it's looking a bit scruffy. Um, it's it's nice. I don't think it's any different to the other Bulldozer other than um, the design. I think the uh, exhaust pipes are in different places. A few little bits haven't actually parked one next to the other. And obviously it comes with handrails. It'd be nice to see the non-handrail model. Um, it would be nice if there was a bigger one. Um, you know, the Legal 1000 bulldozer, maybe with a, a blade that's more designed for carrying material. Um, assuming that this blade's carrying about 20 tons, uh, it would be nice if there was like a 50 ton bulldozer blade. That would be awesome. So, yeah, as you can see from this dirt stuff, there isn't much material to be had. Uh, it really isn't worth running, I'm just getting rid of it. <laughs> it's just got to go. And they're lag down to 18, so yeah. Um, and they're not going to get much more in without risking a game crash, really. I think one more push. See what happens. Could do a save, of course. <laughs> that might be a good idea. Regularly save before each push. But that's a bad sign if you've got to do that kind of thing. Probably should have parked my dozer properly before doing that. Moving block during save. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Whether it goes orbital or not. Because stuff going orbital in the Unreal 4 engine appears to happen quite often. Uh, because the blocks you construct are a physical entity. As you're constructing them, even as a ghost image. They can intersect with vehicles and do some interesting things. Likewise, uh, Unreal 4 engine game again the railroads game, when you chop down trees after you've built an embankment through them they can really go, <laughs> like they get some quite high velocities on them and they go orbital, um, you know I, I, I've seen NASA engineers going green with envy looking at that, um, likewise they take notes from Kerbal Space Program players. Yeah, there was another drop to 19. So you get about 15 to 20 minutes of bulldozer time. You can get about 20 minutes to half an hour of uh, loader time. And it, it's just how many bulls you generate per minute until you hit the FPS limit, um, pretty much, by the looks of things. I don't know what that means for the program. I'm not the program's designer, and I have no clue how it actually works. Most of what I'm doing, I'm theorizing from basic uh, systems knowledge from pulling apart CAD machines and their programming. 
Um, probably not that relevant, but it gives me a base model for, to work from. A base working model is always a good start uh, in any problem and solution. But yeah, so I'm going to be bulldozing material for the rest of the day like this, I should think, out of this hole and just building up a stack of rich stuff. Uh, and then I'll do one big bulldozer caching run with the rich stuff because I can just put it straight into the grizzly hopper over there. So yeah, I'll just go forwards into the pile and then on the angle and in, over into the hopper and we'll offload tons and tons and tons all at the same time. Make loads of money. If there was any money in it, which there isn't because it's all this dirt. But as you can see, I'm making a dent. I'm slowly working my way into the point where I'm probably going to need to do a bit of either excavator work or, or get in there with the bulldozer and bash it out into a pile like this. So yeah. Just see if I can get a bit more loft on that. Yeah. There we go. which machine I loaded last. That one. Okay. Luckily it's still running. <laughs> but this might crash the game. We're getting to that point. So, find out. If this video ends abruptly, it's because it crashed the game. I could record and end and edit it on now. I know how to join two bits together. But, uh, all that time doing that, it's time I could be spent gaming. Terrible attitude. I'm a YouTube creator now. <laughs> uh, you got to laugh at it, as I say, otherwise the ego kicks in and you're in real trouble. Real trouble. Um, but yeah, thanks to all the subscribers and viewers who are watching. Thanks to anyone who's managed to put up with me for a half hour of this video. Well done. Congratulations. Uh, all the Discord guys getting involved. It helps. Um, little hints and tips that we're all sharing with each other that I'm then sharing in the videos as they come up, really. Uh, I haven't really done a dedicated one to how to get this game to perform better sort of thing. Uh, there's other people out there doing that. Um, and they're better than me. <laughs> I think would uh, be the best way of putting it. They at least have a lot more subscribers. So uh, if, if you're thinking about... If the game interests you, you want to keep up, you want to see something different. Because I know I think differently about this and certainly the Discord boys. They've got a different angle on it again. Uh, you know, hit the subscribe button, uh, join the Discord. It's, it's, uh, it's all about creating a community, improving gaming, improving ourselves as gamers, improving games, really, because every fault we find and point out is a fault that hopefully gets rid. Uh, so eventually we end up with some really nice software, you know. That's that's my, my aim and viewpoint. I want a nice, stable mining game. Um, and I'm pretty sure the developer does too. It seems to be his baby, his dream. Um, and it's a good one. I like it. I do like this game. It's keeping me occupied. Uh, I keep on playing Space Engineers as well. Um, currently in that one though I'm just fueling up the base and uh, doing those kind of things so it's AFK. Uh, I've done the mining and now it's just a matter of the base doing the converting to fuel. Uh, I could put more fuel converters into the base and speed up the process but the base is already like 20,000 PCU and requires stripping down quite heavily. So uh, adding to it is not happening. I'm going to strip it down. I'm going to rebuild it. I'm going to make it pretty. And hopefully we're going to open up the server once we've uh, modified some of the terrain on the, on the moon uh, to make things a bit more interesting, a bit more quickly for people coming in uh, and have a bit of a laugh with the multiplayer space engineer server. We'll see how it goes. Uh, that'd be fun. If it gets popular enough, then, well, I might have to consider building a computer to run a space engineer server. Um, but if it gets to that point, there'll be a seven days to die server as well. We'll see, we'll see. See how popular things get, won't we? All in the future and all to play for. Um, literally, it's about gaming and it is all to play for. Hey, <laughs> he made a funny. Um, sorry, my sense of humor is whack, it's off the wall. Um, way too much Jim Jeffries in there, I think. Oh, oh, nine FPS. Yeah, we're going to stop digging now. Um, it's taking way too long for stuff to fall off that blade. 
as I say, fix this FPS problem and we've got a beautiful piece of software here in my opinion. It's uh, it's very nice, having a lot of fun with it. So yeah, um, this is Bulldozer Mining. <laughs> can see what we've got over here. Not much coming out there. I may have to get rid of these jaw crushers. I think they're robbing me of stuff, but it might just be that there's nothing coming out. I shall try it with some better material before I really knock these out, I think. I think that'll be the trick. Nothing worth having. I think I'll just delete the contents of that one by doing the restart now. Ah, I'll let it run. I need to go and buy more four floor blocks, so whilst it's running that, I'll do that. And that's the thing with when you've got to wait for the machines to run, it's just find something else to do. Um, as I say, I've got a nasty Dreamite addiction. Um, <laughs> I've been using a lot of that to clear surfaces and stuff, uh, blowing out roads. Should really get some of some of the other vehicles out and have a play. But I'm running on minimal vehicles. Um, I've only got three. Uh, it seems to help. I don't know. It might just be because they were from a previous update, and I've updated the vehicles and bought new ones so that the code's better. Who knows? The strange things that go on in software. Grr. I really do have problems with it. Uh, we'll try those out. Need some variety in our lives. Try some of them too. Planning some hopper conversions. So uh, I'm going to be uh, doing some experiments with different blocks, different textures, seeing what they look like. These machines should all have finished now. Not really a lot coming out of that lot. That one. So yeah, thanks for tuning in. Um, I hope this sort of explains why the bulldozer holds stuff on the blade uh, and what you can use it for. And uh, as I get closer to those hoppers, you'll see uh, the volume will go up. I'll end up having to uh, dreamite stuff uh, between offloads. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see what goes down. So. Yeah, this whole restart thing, as you see, uh, I've had to do it twice during the video. Uh, the video is just coming up on 40 minutes long. So therefore, you're going to be restarting the game every 20, 15 to 20 minutes or so, guaranteed. Uh, if you want to maintain your FPS and keep, keep on mining, which is the aim of the game. So I'm hoping the FPS is now top of the list with the developer. So yeah, and we're back in the room. So, thank you very much for tuning in everybody, thank you to all of the viewers, all of the subscribers, all of the Discord members, all of the people giving me help and advice, like I really appreciate it, as I say, I, I'm a small fish in the big YouTube pond and uh, any constructive criticism, yeah, definitely, so uh, yeah, thank you all very much, it's a very wet morning here in the southern UK, and uh, Mr JP signing off for the moment.